Hello, bonjour, it's Margaret, and welcome to Bobolero's. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, but also inspiration from the world of art. In today's case, it'll be also inspiration from the world of travel and random drippings from the brain pan. So thank you so much for this very special edition because it's not about knitting. It's about my trip, shopping haul, restaurants that I visited, and other random drippings from my trip to Paris. So thank you for joining me. If you are interested in having a bunch of discussion about frivolous things, then you've come to the right place. Okay, first off, what I'm wearing, I am wearing the Coco Bolero. Um, I just thought I'd wear it because Coco Chanel was the inspiration when I designed this piece. And so it's just a really cute kind of Chanel inspired jacket. Uh, inspired by like the tweed and the texture. It's very easy to knit and straightforward and on a super bulky so it really has a nice like bulk to it that stands up well in the construction of it and you could wear it definitely on its own especially in this weather which is transitional now so anyway onwards to the goodies about paris okay so my husband usually goes for a conference in the spring to Paris. And like, I always joke, I am coming with you. Even if I have to like fit into the suitcase, there is no way that I'm missing this. So he very graciously um, agreed that it would be a good idea that I come. Good idea is actually, maybe not the right word. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Um, but in any case, he acquiesced. So, once I found out that I was going to be going on a trip to Paris, I decided to do a little research about, you know, I should have researched more things to see, but I'm embarrassed to admit I started to research, like, handbags. That's what I started to research. I'll be honest. And um, so I found a bunch of information on YouTube. There such a world of if you're interested in handbag shopping and i was interested in this um, new trend i don't know if it's a trend but it's just something that is there called um quiet luxury french brands now when it comes to purses i like a good purse but i don't like um i personally don't want to be screaming um a label but I like it to be well-made leather, um, made in Italy or Portugal or Spain or, you know, somewhere like that. And yeah, but I want it to be good <laughs> um, at the same time. But, you know, I saw a purse, like the last purse I really liked, I it was a purse by Ferragamo and I thought that's really a chic purse. It's the um, Hug Bag by Ferragamo. And it just like caught my eye. And then I saw the price tag and I just couldn't justify the price tag. And aside from that, it doesn't close. And that drives me crazy. When a bag doesn't close, when it doesn't have a zipper or it doesn't have like a good clasp, I'm like, I, you know, after living in New York City for over 14 years of my life, I, I'm so used to like, keeping things closed and you know always looking behind your back you know like i that's just my mentality all the time and so i'm thinking if you travel and you're in busy places and you have this expensive handbag and you have things inside of it like people could just like reach in it's almost like trick-or-treat basket it's like trick-or-treat yeah take what you want <laughs> so i was like okay um so my my mind was geared towards this investigating this idea of what is quiet luxury brand in paris and so i found this one channel called alice in paris and i started doing like a bunch of watching of her videos of this quiet luxury phenomenon how to you know score a handbag for under 500 dollars that is good luxury piece 
and good, well-made. And so that was kind of what I was after. So before the trip, I thought I really don't have a bag to wear on the trip where I could fit things in, like my knitting and book and stuff like that. So I noticed from my research that there was one brand called Guibert and that they shipped to the US. And I know I was going there, but at the same time, I needed a bag to travel with. Does that sound so ridiculous? Even, I can't even believe I'm talking about this stuff. But in any case, I saw this bag and I said, that's so cool. Um, it'll be perfect to travel in. And it arrived and it was great, but it wasn't what I thought. Like, I didn't think I'd have so many options with it because it turned out, as much as I love green, I didn't expect it to be green. And so my idea of traveling with this as my main bag during my trip, it just backfired. I got in touch with um, the Guiber company and um, this wonderful um, young lady that works for them, Mathilde, who said, no problem when you're in Paris, come and we'll exchange it for something else. So I was, you know, super excited about that. So. We flew out on a Thursday night, and so while on the plane, I watched this one documentary, which I've been wanting to see for so long, but I couldn't find it anywhere on Netflix or in the US. It seems unavailable, but it's called The Mysterious Mr. Lagerfeld, about Karl Lagerfeld. And Anyway, it's a really great documentary. If you're ever on United Airlines, they are playing it right now. And uh, one of the things it talked about was how Karl Lagerfeld had such a massive book collection. He was a huge reader and he acquired so many books. And the place where he would go to get most of his books was um, a store called Gallig Nani uh, bookstore and very close to the Louvre and I thought okay so that I have to go to that bookstore so that was already on the list so let me just take you through some of the things that I saw um, restaurants and a couple purchases because I don't know if this is of value to anyone or just like ridiculous banter but I just felt like talking about some of these things because they're so beautiful. <laughs> they're just so beautiful. There's so much beauty in, in Paris. Um, one of the first things that I saw in Paris when we arrived was a florist we passed by and the beauty of the bouquets just got me. And one of my favorite flowers is, um, Oh my gosh, it's like, a, it's not a ranunculus, it's, but it's very close to it. In any case, I saw it in this bouquet and I said to my husband, oh my gosh, I just love that bouquet so much. And he very sweetly um, got me that bouquet, even though we were staying at a hotel. And even though my part of the visit was only like four days, um, I had these beautiful uh, flowers that to look at all the time and it was my first purchase in Paris or you know first of our purchases and it was just I don't know it just set the tone for everything um, flowers and I have to say perfume so I have two kids and so I asked each of them like what would you like uh, because I could only get one thing and so my younger one my younger daughter Maya said I'd like shoes and my son Aaron said I'd like cologne so I was looking for a really interesting cologne and I stumbled upon a brand named L'Artisan Parfumeur and I'm only showing this because this is the scent that I got. They have unisex kind of scents and uh, this one was just so interesting. It was a combination of sandalwood and some citrus notes and 
just the absolute in it was so beautifully packaged and the artwork oh my gosh like everything about it just kind of caught my attention and it was such a incredible um smell i wish you could smell it and this is like the sample they gave me and i'm already almost out of it because i keep dousing myself in it but they have so many wonderful fragrances i don't know if it's possible to get this in the states but um, it certainly is a very, very specialty brand in Paris. Um, moving on to my handbag situation. So I had this handbag to return turn in um, the Guibert store. Now, Guibert is a company which I learned was around for, I think, over 100 years. And they are in the leather making business and making saddles and things for equestrian for many many decades and so the they got into purses i think i don't know when but in any case they make all sorts of different types of purses and also larger kind of totes and everything in between and beautiful leather so my appointment i thought was at 11 on saturday and so we walked like in paris you do so much walking so we walked the hour and a half to get to the store to make the exchange only to find that i messed up the time and our time was actually 11 a.m u.s time which meant 5 p.m paris time so uh Mathilde from the store um, because the store was closed on saturday except she was coming in to open the store for for us and to do some things so we were able to get an earlier appointment and she couldn't have been more kind um to allow us in to take a look at other options and so anyway um <laughs> um okay here we go well I decided on a different option because my first option was a pretty big, not tote, but like satchel kind of situation. But then I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I kind of had a crossbody situation for my everyday life? And crossbody bags are the thing in Paris. Everybody seems to be wearing crossbody bags. And so, they had at Guibert um, one kind of brand called, well, one style called the Allure bag. And let me just show you this because it's just such a nice bag. Um, first of all, these letters are designed by the same designer who was doing the artwork, the jewelry for Coco Chanel and others. So he's well known in the industry and he was the designer for this letter. And I have to say, this is, uh, I think, a gold plating. And it's so well made. And, like, this magnetic thing is, like, if you can hear this, it is so tight. And it's so grippy. And I love that. So I've already probably stacked more than I should in here, but the leather is just beautifully stitched around. It's a classic look here. It's got a little pocket for the phone and whatnot. Um, and it fits a decent amount, but you're not going to overstuff it like I have here. Um, and when I don't overstuff it, it's just like the perfect little accessory it's got a long strap you can adjust the height you want and like this is what it looks like on i just love this bag because it was again like in the 400 or so dollar price point which was you know certainly not the three thousand dollar price point of the ferragamo that i was eyeing um and it just hits the buttons so well and the leather is french calf skin and i think it's put together in italy not italy but i think in spain but i'm not sure about that either spain or portugal or italy one of those and anyway um 
I was debating between this color and another color, they had this incredible orange. Like, this is an orange that I saw on the website and I was not really interested in it. But when I saw it in real life, I was captivated because it's not a typical orange. On the internet, it read like a pumpkin-y orange. But when I saw it in real life, it was more like a salmon kind of terracotta. It had like an aged kind of like, it reminds you of the kind of oranges from like orange colors used in old frescoes in Italy or something like that. And I just was so taken aback by that color that um, my husband said, you know, you have a birthday coming up, so I'll get you the orange one too. Ah, I couldn't believe it. So um, here is the orange. And I mean, it's so good. It is such a good orange. Um, I would dare say it's a neutral. Like, it's that good because it works with everything. The way, again, like just the whole construction, it's so minimal. Um, it's, I love a boxy kind of shape for a bag and it's nicely lined inside. There's one pocket inside and it's just, I mean, it's so great. I, I can't say enough about these bags. The only thing that's a little bit annoying is that I could never find where the clasp is, clasp is. So I have to kind of fiddle with it. But other than that, um, it's just so great. So super, super happy with my final selections here. I was debating because there were some bags that I had researched and I was curious about, and I did go to look at them in real life because again, online, you just never really know what you're getting. So one of them was bag um, by a designer named um, Atelier Auguste and uh, a kind of similar bag, I would say in some ways to this with the square shape, but it had instead a closure, which was a rectangle um, gold. And so I liked it, but then my husband said to me, oh, that reminds me of like a camera bag. And once he said that, then that just like killed it for me. And so <laughs> it was between that and then also another <clears throat> handbag, maker named Polen, a French brand, very popular these days. And I saw some of the bags, but nothing really appealed to me. And also the colors didn't really quite do it for me as much as the Guibert. So at the end, that was my choice. And I was just really, um, I don't know, like I did so much um, research about this. <laughs> I wish I was so good at researching other things as I am like purchases. Like I really should use that skill for, I would say, um, more profound things. But <clears throat> in any case, it was so much fun to look and watch these videos and see what's possible and see what you like and then, you know, go to these places. It just made it even more sweet. Okay, so... <coughs> On to shoes. Um, okay. Last year, on my last year's trip in Galleries Lafayette, which is a big department store in Paris, it's so great, um, I saw a pair of pumps by the brand Bobby's. Never heard of this brand before, Bobby's. It's a French brand, and also they make their shoes in Spain and Portugal, Italy. And the price point, again, was rather reasonable. And so uh, I, was, I was taken, I really was smitten by these pumps. And I mentioned them to my mom when I got back from Paris. And for Mother's Day, we treated each other to the same pair of pumps. <laughs> so she bought them for me and I bought them for her. And we had them shipped from... Paris. Now, you could go on the Bobby site and they will ship to the US. And if memory serves me, I think the shipping was free. I don't know how that's possible. But I think somebody explained to me that like when you go to Paris and you're not 
um, a citizen that you could get the tax back, the VAT, V-A-T tax back. And so when you purchase online, the VAT tax is kind of built into the price. And so that's why you could do the free shipping for them. That's how it works in any case. Um, another thing that I needed for the trip was a comfortable pair of walking shoes. And last year I had sneakers on and I don't know what has happened to my foot, but I need elevation at this point in my life. I need a platform. And so I was like, I want to get a nice pair of French shoes, but I need them before I arrive. So what do I do? I go to the Bobby site and I start looking around and I find a platform booty. And I was like, oh, that'll be really good. Oh my gosh. So there's a whole story with this. So this is what I got. These platform booties. Now, like when they came, my husband was somewhat horrified. He was like, oh my gosh, you look like the lead singer from the band Kiss. <laughs> That's what he said. I guess it was the square toe and the platform. I don't know what it was, but can I tell you, I love these so much. The leather is so buttery. The platform is so comfortable um, that I was like, I'm keeping them. I don't care if I look like Gene Simmons from Kiss. I am still wearing these and proud to wear them. Anyway, I love them. I need a platform this big at this point. It's for, it's not, it's for orthopedic health. Anyway, I'm joking. But, you know, truth be told, did I wear these once I got there? No, no. I mean, somewhat a little bit, but not as much as I thought, just because I had to do so much walking. I ended up wearing, um, what shoes did I wear actually for all my walking? Oh my God, which shoes did I wear? I can't even remember what shoes I wore, but they were comfortable. But they weren't as funky as these, uh, but still they did the job. Oh, it was my platform Uggs. I had platform Ugg sneakers and um, they got the job done. Uh, again, I need a platform. What can I say? I need a platform. So, uh, Bobby's, I went to their store cause I was, you know, actually they have, um, Bobby's in two department stores that I visited. I went back to Galleries Lafayette and there was another department store close to our hotel called La Samaritan, which was incredible, absolutely incredible. And so I went to the shoe department and I saw that they were carrying Bobby's there and, um, I kind of like fell in love with these um, loafers. <laughs> so I wanted a great loafer for a while. And a look that I've seen on the street is loafers with tights and either a dress or a skirt. And I, I think it looks so chic. And I have seen people like even wear these like with like a little sock and it's really adorable too. Although I don't think I would do that. But anyway, I'm wearing them right now. I love these and I was happy to get them. Although I couldn't find my size cause it was like, like the three bears. One was a little too big, one was a little too small and to find the perfect one was hard, but I had to go. So I found these originally at the department store, but their size 38, which is the size I take, was too big for my foot. One of them was too big. And I was like, why is one of them too big for my foot? And it turned out that was the um, display model, which I think was stretched out. And that was the last pair they had. And so the next day I found a Bobby's store, like about half, like 20 minutes walk away. And so they had my size. So I was like, Oh yeah, good. Um, so yeah, so those were the two bobbies and then Maya, my daughter wanted shoes. So what I did was when I was at the La Samaritan, uh, department store, I got out my camera and I videotaped the entire shoe department. <laughs> and I said, 
does anything here strike your eye? And she was like, immediately, she's like, I love those Mary Janes. So let me tell you a little bit about this um, Mary Jane. So from previous episode, you might have heard about um, Maya and I um, excursion to the store Rouge in New York City, which is a Paris based brand. Well, they're big on shoes as well. And so Maya got a pair of Mary Janes there. And so Mary Janes was just like, like a little bit of a heel and a strap and super cute. And she just wears them all the time and loves them. And she said, I need another pair of Mary Janes. And there were, um, these slingbacks. And she's like, oh, the slingbacks, Mary Janes are so adorable. I said, yeah, they're so cute. So they had them in white by a brand that's, again, an older French house named Carrel, and C-A-R-E-L. And they were super cute, but they didn't have her size. And she's a size 39. And so they had a size 40. I was like, maybe. And she's like, no, there's no way I could fit into a 40. So then it ensued this like wild goose chase to get those shoes that she wanted in the color she wanted. So the, and I'm like, go on their website and see exactly what the options are. And she came back with, and I said, I need two options because I don't know what's available in terms of sizing and stuff. So she's like, okay, the white ones are my number one choice, but pink are my second choice. I said, okay. So now it's Monday. And it's my last day and I figured, okay, this is the day I have to like knock out the rest of these gifts. And so I walked to Galleries Lafayette and I knew that they also carried this brand. So I go and of course they don't have white. I'm like, where's the white? There's no white. Um, and so I was like, okay, plan B, I see the pink and the pink was like, at first I thought pink Mary Jane's. I thought, hmm, that might be a stretch until I saw the pink. And then it was that shade of pink that just like was, took my breath away. It was just such a perfect pink. And I realized this is the one, like this is gonna be it. They had her size, everything was just perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> parfait. Um, and so that was it. So again, all right, check the box, got the shoes. So now I'm like, okay, um, you know, my credit card wasn't working right. I don't know why. I guess it's because like my, the bank thought that it was fraud and not used to like f charges from Paris. And so I'm calling the bank and all this stuff. And, you know, there was like, there was, a lot of like messed up charges on my card. So I ended up spending like a good two hours on the phone with the bank in this store, wasting precious time, trying to like resolve all this like mayhem and stuff. And then at the end, um, to make myself feel better, I found a Mary, pair of Mary Janes for myself. <laughs> Aren't these adorable? So this is like a totally new to me brand. And I also couldn't decide whether to get these in pink or black. And I actually purchased them in pink first and then took them back and was like, no, I, I think I should go with the black. Be safe. Because the question was be safe or be wild. Um, I went for safe just because I think I'll get more use out of these. So I can't even say how much I love these. Um, this is a company, a brand named Manfield. I don't think you could get these in the US. Um, and they're made in, let me see, in um, Italy. And just, oh, just a perfect kind of heel. I don't know, after seeing Maya wearing her Mary Janes all the time, and just, I love kind of 40s looks. I. I just, I got the bug. I said, oh, I could see these like with jeans or little skirts or dresses. They're just so cute. And again, the price point for an Italian shoe was like, again, it was fairly reasonable. And with the, you know, getting the VAT tax back, I just thought, oh, but of course I ran into the problem. Like, how do I pack? Because I was already kind of like, 
overpacked when I arrived and then to try to fit more stuff to, that was a whole other conundrum. I'm not gonna bore you with that. That was not fun or interesting, but in any case, the shoes were done. Let's talk about restaurants because the food in Paris is phenomenal. Let's just say it's just phenomenal. And it, there's so much goodness there. It's just hard to even, um, it's hard to even say. But one place, I'll just name a couple of the places where we went in case you're looking for rec recommendations. These are definitely places that I would recommend. So one place is called Flot. And that, I think it's like, well, it's near the Rue Cambon. And so it, it, what's nice is like, you could look at the displays at Chanel and then walk down the street and have a fantastic croque monsieur, which is what we had at Flot. And it, it is just such a delightful, really old school kind of place. And we had a couple of dinners there last year. This year, we just went there for lunch. We had um, French onion soup and that sandwich. And yeah, it just, it is never disappoints. It's just a wonderful, wonderful place. Last year also for dinner, we went, um, the final night we found this restaurant called um, Brasserie Capuchin. There are a bunch of cappuccines. This one is called the Brasserie Capuchin and excellent. The lighting is so interesting. Like when you walk up, so it's got this lights, but then they have like some red, I don't know what it is in front of it, but like some smoked red glass. And so it creates this like very cool lighting inside. Um, we always would sit on the second floor. It's just very romantic vibe and delicious food. So we went there twice. Um, again, French onion soup was something that was on the bill each time. And I actually had a salad there that was so good. It was like a um, chicken salad, which had curry in it, which is not a French dish, but it was so good. I was really pleasantly surprised by that. And um, yeah, it, it just a wonderful place. So a lot of fun. A place also last year that I went um, by myself was called um, Brasserie Vagnand, which one of my friends told me was a must, um, that he loved it for the fact that it's got this like really cool Belle Epoque kind of um, decor inside. And truly it does. Mirrors everywhere and just the gilding. It's like old world and oh, it's, it's like a fantasy there. And that is on the left bank. We ended up going there for dinner on the final night and my husband loved it so much that after I left, he kept going back. Uh, if you're the type of person that really likes old school, then this might be a consideration for you. Just, um, they do it right. Um, I forgot what my husband had. He had the cod and mashed potatoes and like spinach, but it was really perfection. I got, I think the French onion soup again um it was almost like surveying like who has the best french onion soup they came really close they were really good um but at the end i think i like the french onion soup even more at the um cappuccine restaurant anyway but their profiteroles were an absolute like decadence in chocolate it was unreal so they poured this dark chocolate over these cream puffs and it was like a river of chocolate that would never end. It was like, uh, extravagance at its height. It was incredible. And then one last place that I will mention just because it was so cute on the outside. I saw it last year and I would walk by and I thought it's just the cutest looking place because it was pale green with pink accents and on the outside and lights and it just seemed like such a cozy little spot that I said to Mark I said we have to like just jump in there and have a cup of tea um and it was Sunday night and we did and I was so happy that we did that anyway it's called Cafe Saint Honoré and lovely little spot a lovely little nook and I heard that they have great breakfast and so that's like 
if there's a spot that I would say that would be a cute knitting spot, that would be it. Just one of those like adorable places. I, I, I can't explain like the, the French music they had, the quaint little spots, like little antique things and touches. And then they had these flowers, like they were obviously not real flowers, but they were kind of suspended from the ceiling and had the twinkle lights. And I don't know, I'm such a sucker for that effect. It was so cozy and cute. So um, adorable place. And that was that. Um, one last fashion purchase um, was made and that was on my last day. And that was totally by surprise. I did not expect this. But uh, in 2017 in Seattle, while on vacation, I got a pair of sunglasses at, I don't even know, it was just one of these like very small sunglass places. And I am a very difficult person to fit with sunglasses, very difficult. I don't know, my face shape, it just doesn't work for most brands. But I found this brand named Thierry Lasry. And since 2017, those sunglasses live inside my little sunglass case, which I also got in Seattle, which you could get this bag. I, I love this little bag. I don't know who makes it. Um, but if you want the link, just let me know and I'll send it to you. You could get these on Amazon. These precious sunglasses have lived in this bag since 2017 and nothing has happened to them. They're almost as good as the day I first got them. I wear them all the time. These are my only sunglasses and the frames. So Thierry Lasry, he is, he was designing sunglasses for all the big brands, Gucci, um, you know, all of them, Prada, I think. And so like, if you're a person that likes big glasses, then he makes big glasses. I love big glasses. So, um, and always very interesting stuff going on on the perimeter. So it's Monday night and Mark and I are walking along the left bank and suddenly I see a Thierry Lastry store. And I never even knew that that existed. And so this is it. And we went inside. It was so nice, like this little shop, and this, like a very nice sales lady was there and this cutest little Yorkie. Her Yorkie was there sitting on the couch, like cute as a button, just watching everything. It was the most adorable thing. And so um, I got a backup pair of sunglasses just because, oh man, so like all these like little touches. So this is like the bag, which is so, so cute, so pretty all these extra touches. This is the first time I'm opening these since I came back. So it comes in this nice ca case. These cases are too big for my purses. So that's why I put them in those other little softer cases. So this was the, this was the pair I decided on. Um, I really thought this coal sand effect was so super cool and reminds me of Paris. And these are called Gambly, Gambly 7005, handmade in Italy. So yeah, these are my backup. These are my backup and that's it. And they fit, you know, like they kind of could fit it in case it's too big. In my case, they were a little big, so she fit it for me and anyway, I'm super excited to have a backup pair in case the other one's kaput. Then you have a backup pair. And that's it for the fashion purchases. And, um, you know, so it's a little damage, I would say, a little damage. But I love every one of them. I wanted to share with you a perfume I got last year. If you're at all interested in historical perfumes, now, they have a whole line of some historical perfumes. They, this is um, Astier de Volant. And so they have three historical perfumes. The one I got is called Les Nuits. And this is apparently 
a recreation of the perfume that George Sand, writer from the 1800s, and also um, the love interest of Frédéric Chopin, she wore this scent, and they found it. One of her great, 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 great grandchildren found this in George Sand's personal effects, a tiny, tiny little vial of this perfume that she wore in, like she's, George Sand was a huge lover of perfumes and she had a tiny little vial that she wore as a necklace around her neck. I guess she kept reapplying. And uh, so I, being a huge Chopin and George Sand fan, um, I had to get this. So this is still what remains from last year. And I was wearing this pretty often. It is a, I would say a really pungent, not pungent, powdery. It's like Shalimar. If you're familiar with Shalimar, it's got Shalimar type vibes. It's incredible. It's so interesting and floral and fruity and I love it. Um, and so, yeah, if you're interested in that kind of thing, then this place, I, I, that was on my list again to go and check out this place, Astier de Volant. They are mostly known, they make beautiful ceramics and it's just a beautiful little shop, but I, I ran out of time, unfortunately, so I didn't get around to all of it. Okay, last final little things, chocolate. So these were kind of more gifts, but Pierre Hardy. This is a, no, Pierre Hermé. Yeah, Pierre Hermé. Why did I say Hardy? Who's Pierre Hardy? I feel like I have heard of Pierre Hardy. Pierre Hermé, who is a chocolatier. Now, if, I don't know if you guys have these like Nespresso machines, but there is a, like currently, a raspberry coffee, um, raspberry coffee flavor that he, Pierre Hermé, has made for Nespresso. And so I already know him from that, but I never had chocolates from him. I don't know why this is like open, but anyway, this is um, a box of chocolates that I got as a gift for someone or not. <laughs> depending on my level of self-control. <laughs> so um, these are little cubes. I wish I could open this, but I don't think I can. Although like the tape is already coming undone, but is this nice packaging? I really loved it. That's such a beautiful package. I, that's what I love about these French things. They're just so thought out. It's in the details. So I got that, and what else did I get? Tea, oh my gosh, this was so funny. I got this um, tea, I, I thought I brought it here, but I didn't. Mariage des Frères, which is um, a very well-known French company, and it's called Love in Paris. And I just made my first tea this morning, and I posted about it. it I was totally not expecting this. The tea water turned blue. I was like, what? Um, but apparently that is on purpose, that it's called blue tea. It had a very interesting flavor, very unexpected. I was surprised. Last but not least, um, because I was watching that Carl Lagerfeld documentary and I really wanted to check out the bookstore, uh, Galignani, that he was frequenting, I went there. So it's a beautiful bookstore. I think there are a lot of beautiful bookstores in Paris. That's the one thing that I wish we had more of here in the States and in New York. Um, there were so many special bookstores when I was growing up and in the city um, that I would frequent all the time. One of my favorites was Rizzoli, which was on 57th Street. They had the most incredible um, art books and it's like long gone. And I don't know, it's just like those special kind of boutiques that you miss so much. And so going to Paris, I started reading this book, which I got from the library, Parisians by Graham Robb, An Adventure History of Paris. I love books like this because it's not chronological. It's more like just these little bits and pieces, these little stories that take you through, um, 
like different points of history. It starts off with a story about Napoleon Bonaparte's one of his first visits to Paris as an 18 year old and a very interesting, um, let's just say, meetup he had with somebody that he saw. And um, yeah, imagine, like that's before Napoleon became Napoleon, right? Um, but so these are the kind of stories that are peppered in this book. The second story is about the man who saved Paris. This is so fascinating. I had no idea that there's this whole underground world in Paris and this man was largely responsible for creating it. Anyway, a very fascinating book. And so that was the book that I got in soft cover when I was at Galignani. I thought it was appropriate. So yes, and I love that it has a bookmark that will remind me of that. So, you know, it's so nice. Um, I'm not a huge traveler. I, I will tell you honestly, even going this year, like uh, about a week beforehand, I was not going to go because I am such a creature of habit and to travel and to get out of routine is for me difficult. And so I was even saying to like my friends, I even said to Mark, you know what? Maybe I won't go. He was like, are you crazy? I'm glad at the end I went because I'm always happy when I'm there and um, and then live off of those memories for months to come. So anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining me on this little like recap of my trip. A little drippings from the brain pan, a little sharing of adventures. And if you have any suggestions of places in Paris that that you love restaurants or you know museums or anything that really you'd love to like share the secret please write in the comments below because i think um those are always so much fun i definitely think that when we um have recommendations from other people it, there's just a different feeling than from a random Google review, even for a restaurant, you know, because when your friend says, oh, I've been to this restaurant, they have the best croissants, like you have to go to this cafe for this or that, you know, that's just so much more meaningful, I think, than a random Google review. So anyway, thank you so much and I'll see you really soon. Bye.